Stepping into the third dimension with Ocarina of Time, the developers wanted an antagonist with more personality than the Savage Beast Ganon that sat at the end of previous Zelda games. This culminated in the creation of Ganondorf, the now familiar humanoid incarnation of The Legend of Zelda's legendary villain. In the Smash series, villains were missing from the original game on Nintendo 64, so naturally, a few were added in Melee. Alongside Bowser, Ganondorf's inclusion added an antagonist from one of Nintendo's most famous franchises. His design was a bit lazy, simply acting as a slower, stronger clone of Captain Falcon. He performed decently in competitive play, ultimately falling into mid-tier due to his lack of speed and poor recovery. In Brawl, Ganondorf used his Twilight Princess design and sported a new side B, which acted as a command grab. Lacking the combo potential and safe aerials from Melee, Ganondorf fell all the way to bottom tier in the third Smash game. It wasn't much different than Smash 4. While always terrifying thanks to his immense KO power, Ganondorf's poor disadvantage state and universal lack of speed still sealed his fate as a lower bottom tier character. Make sure you don't seal your fate like Ganondorf and go ahead and click that subscribe button below the video right now. For more details on Ganondorf's history, you can also check out our documentary on his competitive story. In Smash Ultimate, Ganondorf got a look back to the past with his Melee Ocarina design returning. The mechanics of Smash Ultimate made him feel a bit closer to Melee too, with improved ground movement, lower lag on aerials, and practical edgeguarding. This made Ganondorf initially seem like a better character than he had been in the last two Smash games, and some early results were consistent with this. Over time though, the 7 foot tall Gerudo would suffer a familiar defeat, again falling down into low tier as punishes and edge guards were optimized. Still, Ganondorf is a fan favorite character with tons of exciting gameplay potential. He's one of the most commonly played low tiers for fun and always an iconic pick. For our question of the day, what do you think Ganondorf needs to become more viable in the current meta? In this video, we'll be answering that question with some help from your own suggestions. And for our strongest suggestion, you should check out ProGuides.com. The benefits of our website are constantly expanding. You can rank up faster with help from our pro instructors, get the help you need when you need it thanks to our InstaPro platform, and learn everything you need through our in-depth character guides. You can also access these benefits conveniently through the ProGuides mobile app. So what makes Ganondorf a weaker character? It's not like every character has the Master Sword after all. First of all, Ganon is slow. He has a bottom 4 run speed, and unlike Wolf, his initial dash is not fast enough to compensate with a great dash dance. Even less like Wolf, his airspeed and acceleration are both pathetic. If you've been keeping up with our How to Fix series, you've probably realized that slow movement is an extremely common factor in gutting a character's competitive potential. Maybe if Ganondorf could fly like he does in Ocarina, this would be manageable, but otherwise, this poor movement hurts him everywhere. In neutral, he won't be able to dash back fast enough to dodge quick approaches, and he won't be able to dash in quick enough to whiff punish. This leads many Ganon players to rely on down and side special to whiff punish, which carries lots of risk. Better players will use dash attack more, but it's still unsafe on shield. In advantage state, Ganondorf will struggle to pursue his opponents, however terrified they may be, often getting more reward from simply waiting for them to land carelessly into him. His double jump height is also pathetically low, so he won't be able to go for juggles until the opponent gets a bit closer to the ground. And perhaps the most detrimental is Ganon's disadvantage state. He can't drift or jump away from almost anything, and he'll often get into positions where you don't even need to edge guard him because he just can't drift close enough to up the ledge. When he's getting juggled, Ganon also has few mix-ups to help him make it to the ground. His air dodge is very slow at frame 4, and his fastest aerial is Nair at frame 7. Breaking combos is about as far away from Ganon as the Triforce of Courage, although you can still eat a big hit trying to pull off slow strings against him. Beyond dodging and aerials, Ganondorf's only landing mix-up is his down special. This move is pretty strong, so it should be respected, but it leaves him in tons of lag, so patient players will punish it every time. Ganon's aerials are generally pretty laggy too, so he may eat a punish for just swinging one right before landing. Getting back to the speed factor, it isn't just Ganondorf's movement, but his frame data as well. Although his moves are somewhat quick for how strong they are, he doesn't have a fast button where he needs it most. In fact, he doesn't have a single move faster than frame 7, making him very easy to overwhelm. Lastly, Ganon is also pretty gigantic. As with other big bodies, this makes him really easy to hit in general. Most rising aerials will hit Ganon on the ground. 
he's easier to juggle with small attacks, and he'll have trouble avoiding good ledge trap coverage. Alright, so what could we do to make Ganondorf a more viable character? Let's take a look at your suggestions. Oh, and make sure to subscribe so you can leave your own suggestions for future videos. Come back! Are you kidding me? Are you serious? They're getting spiked twice! First up, viewer Breadbread said, What if his old up smash replaced his up tilt? Well, this is only one small suggestion, as they said, but what an interesting idea. I watch. No! I can't believe it. This is Although it's definitely iconic, Ganondorf's up tilt is one of the most useless moves in the game. It's incredibly slow and predictable, and there's almost always a better option. His old up smash, however, was amazing. It had huge hitboxes, virtually no end lag, and it was incredibly strong. His new up smash is fantastic for different reasons, but it isn't nearly as safe, so giving him such a great up tilt would be a good buff. Next, Eric Hitchens said, give him a back throw that kills around 110 from ledge. Like the last suggestion, this is a small change that wouldn't make much difference, but it's worth noting Ganon's lack of a kill throw. It's bizarre, since he's generally a more powerful version of Falcon, but Falcon's throws kill much earlier, so he could at least have a decent back throw. Next, PiggyPlague87 has a few interesting ideas. Make his side B not transition to a free fall, give his up B more horizontal range, and give up tilt some super armor. Having side B not put Ganondorf in free fall is a great idea to improve his recovery without changing his airspeed. Incineroar can do this, as well as plenty of better characters like Fox and Falco. And especially with the nerfs to Ganon side in this game, it's surprising this still does put him into free fall. Even with this change, the move would be easy to edgeguard, so it wouldn't be too broken or anything. Up B having more horizontal range would help in the same manner to compensate for his lack of drift speed, and giving up tilt super armor would be nice, but not much of a help. Nick C101 came in with a big list of changes for the dwarf. In summary, fix blind spots on forward and up smash, increase nair hitbox to prevent characters from slipping out between hits, increase grab range horizontally on up B so it doesn't miss point blank and decrease the cooldown to avoid rock crocking, decrease up air startup from frame 8 to 6, and increase run speed, walk speed, and air speed slightly. The blind spots on Ganondorf's smash attacks don't show up often, but given the risk of throwing these out, it would be nice if they never missed due to Z-axis shenanigans and the like. The same goes for Nair, which could more realistically combo into its second hit. Up B missing point blank is also a fix, but the cooldown reduction raises another of Ganon's issues. Like Falcon, he's susceptible to what's known as rock crocking, wherein opponents will intentionally get grabbed by his up B so they can tech the stage and punish its cooldown. This makes it even harder to recover, and punishes Ganondorf for landing a hit, so reducing the cooldown to get rid of this would be great. Making a move as strong as up air frame 6 might sound crazy, but it was actually frame 6 in previous Smash games. This would not only make this move a better go-to edgeguard and juggling option, but a more useful combo breaker. Last but not least, Nick suggests slightly increasing Ganondorf's movement speed, and as we discuss, this is a big issue for Ganon. Even just a little bit more ground and airspeed, ideally including better aerial acceleration, would probably help Ganon more than anything else. Making him too fast would require some of his knockback and damage to be toned down, but giving him just a little extra boost would allow him to still feel like Ganondorf. It's tough to say if Ganondorf could ever really be viable without a huge change though. By design, he's a character with skewed strengths and weaknesses. Ganondorf is epitomized by his huge damage and knockback, but putting that on a fast character would be unfairly broken. Therefore, in order to maintain his iconic strengths, Ganon will probably never climb too high, and we think it's best that way. Anything besides the hit you three times, that's a stock, F smash kills at 40, smash attack shield break into reverse warlock punch, just wouldn't feel like Ganondorf. What do you think? Be sure to let us know and comment which character you'd like to see next. Don't forget to subscribe and click that bell for more from Pro Guides. That was a clean spot!